You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday night lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights of show. I mean, Friday night lights. Who doesn't like it? <laughs> well, we've been hearing about it since in this season last year. This is new season, new game. Everything's new. The crowd is very full and very loud the entire time. But I just know this is going to be a hard fought game. Tukey Me is a sport of their kids so much. It's a fun rivalry to be a part of. Mike Strong, highlight zone. Mike Strong, highlight zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Friday nights in the zone. Zone. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Monroe and Burn, they may, may be small towns, but the Jets and the Starfires, you know, have got some big time talent and a big time rivalry. Adam Central ranked second in the 1A state poll this week. South Adams coming in fifth in 1A. Josh A. And joining us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Well, Glenn, when it comes to the crown in the Allen County Athletic Conference, this matchup has become its crown jewel. Each of the last five seasons, the conference champ has either been the Jets or the Starfires, and this year shaping up to be the exact same scenario. Adams Central, it's South Adams. It's your highlight zone game of the week. The Jets coming in 5-0, and the Starfires 4-1. and AC beating South Adams twice last season. Could they make it three in a row? Well, the Flying Jets certainly in full bloom, as in Keegan Bloom. He gives Adams Central an early 7-0 lead. But South Adams, well, they know a thing or two about airing the ball out as Owen Warner hooking up with Nathan Musselman. A 70-yard touchdown that ties the game at 7 apiece. But that celebration, well, it's a bit short-lived because the next series, Ryan Tester testing out this Adams Central, excuse me, South Adams defense, 171 rushing yards, and that touchdown right there. AC scoring 21 on answer to take a 28-7 lead. Late in the first half, Starfires not letting that fire die just yet as Warner finds Silas Loshi. But Adams Central already ahead, 35-13 at the half. To the third quarter, more Keegan Bloom as the junior. Going for 124 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Adam Central moving to 6-0 as they dominate their cross-county rival 49-20. to It means a lot. We know week six is always circled on the calendar and to come out here and win the game. It was sloppy at times, but come out and execute means a, good, means a lot. Big win. We definitely didn't play to our caliber, I don't think. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, win's a win. We're really happy about that. We're going to come out for the next couple of weeks and keep going, I guess. This can be a really good football team, I believe, but we still got to clean some things up. Very happy and pleased with the way things came out tonight. But uh, uh, as a coach, I just feel like we need, to, we need to clean some things up a little bit more. We're still not where I want to be. Next up, Adams Central is at home against Southern Wells next week, while South Adams is at Jay County. Glenn. Back to you. AC fans better not make any plans around Thanksgiving. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, let's go to the SAC. Carroll pushing perfection. The Chargers looking to go 6-0, and keep their spot atop the conference standings. This will help. First drive of the game, Nate Starks finds his way into the end zone. Three-yard touchdown, and the Chargers up 7-zip right out of the gate. A picture-perfect start. Carroll's defense, oh, they've been so good this season. Braden Steely with the interception off the tip ball, and the Chargers offense is back in business. Coach Doug Dynan loving that. He would like this as well. It's Starks bouncing this to the outside. He would tiptoe the sideline eventually and get into the end zone. Carroll, no problem with south side. Chargers stay perfect, 58-6, your final at Carroll. On paper, maybe the best matchup in the SAC this week. Northside at Homestead, and it played out exactly like that. First play from scrimmage, Homestead football. Peyton Slavin slinging it to Mason Auxier. Great cut back there for the touchdown. And just like that, Homestead up 7-zip. A lot of push-ups in this one for the fans. How about Jonte Lambert, one of the top running backs in the SAC, spun all the way around, full 360, and he goes. 80 yards to the house. Check out his line. 26 carries, 305 yards, two touchdowns for John Tate Lambert in north side. It's seven all. Second quarter, Slavin looking for Brett Fox. is going to break out stud 
for Homestead this season. 76 yards on the touchdown, but Northside, oh, they would come up big late in this one as the legends go to Homestead and nip the Spartans 50 to 49. Snyder, 4-1, looking to stay in the hunt for the victory bell as the Panthers trying to slow down Wayne's Lamarion Nelson, who had over 400 yards and seven TDs last week. Generally say, hey, we can't just run it. We got to throw it, too. That was Christian Trimble to Harold Mack, and Wayne up seven zip on Snyder. Panthers right back, and I mean right back. Ensuing kickoff, Kamari Juarez. Oh, baby, he's got a convoy, a caravan. Call it what you will, because he's got a 90-yard touchdown. Seven. Seven Panthers now on the board. Uriah Buchanan, he really broke out last week with a big game, and he continues to play well. That's a touchdown to make it 14-7 Snyder. Second quarter, it's Buchanan again, and Snyder goes on to win over Wayne, 39-7 at Wayne Manor. At Shields Field, Concordia coming off an overtime win against Northrop Dwenger, looking to bounce back after a loss to Carroll. Coach Jason Garrett certainly would like to see that. Second quarter action, Concordia's Eli Maddox is up with a Johnny Washington. He's down inside the five, but Dwenger's D bending, not breaking. Ryan Groves saving a touchdown with an interception in the end zone, and Dwenger goes into the half up 28 to six on the Cadets. Later in the third, how about some more Dwenger D? Christian Lozada and Franklin Bader combine on the sack, and then it's more defense, Teddy Steele. Steele putting the brakes on that Concordia offense as Dwenger wins with a nice defensive effort, 41 to 12 over the Cadets. Final stop in the SAC, we're talking Spooler Stadium. Northrop playing host to the Bishop Lures Knights. Second quarter action, watch this move. Northrop's Tavon Freeman hurdling the defender. A first down for the Bruins as they matriculate the football down the field and Freeman doing his best Quinton Bowen impersonation. He did that as a running back at Snyder during his playing days. Now that would lead to a 29 yard field goal from Jacob Gump and the Bruins are now on the scoreboard, but down 21 to three. Later in the second, it's Charlie Stansky to Braden McInturf and Mack almost gets into the end zone. Braden McInturf down at the two, very next play, Mickey Gehring. He would cross the plane before the ball comes out, so it is a touchdown as Northrop falls to Bishop Lures by a final of 35 to 10 at Schooler. Well, that is going to do it for the SAC, but coming up, we're getting down to the nitty gritty in the NECC. We're talking big division title implications up on that new beautiful turf in Steuben County as Angola, the Hornets playing host to Fairfield in a key conference showdown. Meanwhile, in the Northeast state, Norwell has been rolling through conference, but would they still be undefeated after a trip to always tough Kendallville? Plus, we got trips to Columbia City, to Eastside, to Warsaw, and many more. Eight local games coming your way after the break on The Zone. If you want more highlights, stay tuned to the highlights. Go, 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 go. Gentlemen, football is the last bastion of hope for humanity. You hear me? It's the last one where you can inflict pain and punishment on somebody, and it's legal. It's completely legal. Oh, man, I cannot wait for Wednesday. That was Eastside head coach Todd Mason, who's done a fantastic job with the Blazers. You're going to hear more from him Wednesday at 6 in the next Highlight Zone 2-Minute Drill. Now, as for Norwell, the Knights looking to keep a streak alive in Kendallville tonight against East Noble. Josh Gerber and company looking for their third win against East Noble in the last three years. And the defense making that happen. It's three zip in the first quarter. Luke Graf, what doesn't this guy do for that football team? He gets the sack there on Xander Brazel. And guess what? Norwell's defense pitches a shutout. Second quarter action. The offense gets going for the Knights. That's Leighton Bailey with it. Short QB sneak for a touchdown to make it 10-zip. Then it's Bailey. You saw him use the feet. How about the arm looking for Cade Shelton? And Shelton is behind the defense. That's a good place to be if you're a wide receiver. 17-0 Norrell. I'm not sure whether last week's performance against New Haven was more impressive or this week's performance against East Noble. At East Noble, Drew Graft with a touchdown here. 24 to nothing as Norwell rolls over East Noble. 45 to nil Norwell. Whew, they are good. Well, just like Norwell, Columbia City came into tonight 3-0 in conference play. The Eagles 
hosting New Haven. And in the first quarter, it's Ethan Seavers. And Seavers is served. It's a touchdown. 7-0 Columbia City stakes themselves to an early lead. Brett Fox's team playing some really good football this year. The Bulldogs have uh, Mylon Graham, and Mylon Graham has been offered by the Crimson Tide of Alabama, which means he's probably pretty fast. He gets a touchdown right there to tie it at 7-all. But the running game from Columbia City taking control. This is James Getz with a touchdown in the first quarter to make it 14-7. Second quarter, it's Josh Arntz with a touchdown. And Columbia City continues to roll the Eagles 49, the Bulldogs just 7. With back-to-back -back wins over New Haven and East Noble, Leo starting to catch fire, gain some momentum. The Lions on the road at Belmont. First quarter, Max Leffler would pick up a first down, just kind of indicative of the night that he had. He had 134 total yards and two touchdowns, but it's nil-nil. Later, Belmont's defense stepping up. That is Ethan Miller with the interception for Nick Hall and the Braves. But guess what? Defense, also the forte of the Leo Lions. Brock shot a name to know for the future. The sophomore with the fumble return, or return for the touchdown. And Leo heats up later, 37-7 over Belmont. Last stop in the Northeast State, Huntington North coming off the 47 nothing win. The Vikings looking to keep it up against DeKalb. Second quarter action. This would help. It's Noah Wagner in the flat. They swing it to the running back, and he goes 55 yards. We're talking double nickel for the junior as Noah Wagner gives Huntington North a 26-21 lead in the second quarter. This one back and forth all night. Later in the second, Tegan Irk, the senior signal caller, looking for Caden Pettis. They've been a great combo all year. 18-yard touchdown strike, 28-26. DeKalb now back in the lead. More from DeKalb here in the third is Derek Overbay, one of the area's top tight ends, with a 25-yard touchdown grab. DeKalb in the lead as the Barons go on to win a good one, 56-48 over Huntington North. A good one if you like offense. Hey, in the NECC, biggest game of the year so far in the big division, Angola undefeated in conference. The Hornets hosting a Fairfield team that came in 4-1 overall. First quarter, Andre Tagliaferri from 13 yards out. He takes it in, and Angola on the board first up 6-0. Later, they go to the air, do the Hornets. Tyler Call calling Samir Ali's number, and he's floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. Samir Ali, 31-yard touchdown, 13-0. Second quarter, Joshua Kunkel with the touchdown in Angola. Ooh, closing in on a conference championship with a 39-6 win over Fairfield. In Butler, Eastside ranked 14th in this week's 2A state poll. The Blazers playing host to Prairie Heights early on. It's Carson Jacobs, and uh, there was a lot of Carson Jacobs in this game. He had 185 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, and three passing touchdowns, six total touchdowns. For the Blazers quarterback Carson Jacobs, but here Perry Heights stepping up. It's Matt Roberts with an interception right there. And then why not reward him? Perry Heights. Matt Roberts would get in for the touchdown here. And Eastside, however, goes on to win big 54 to 12 over the Panthers. In the NLC, the Mishawaka Cavemen 5-0 this season. The Warsaw Tigers 4-1. First quarter, no score, but Mishawaka trying to change that. It's Brady Fisher kind of up and over there for the touchdown. And the Cavemen stake themselves to an early 8-0 lead. Now Warsaw has been able to score, but they do it mostly on the ground. This pass here intercepted by Mishawaka's Jack Troyer. And the cavemen are in business. You can't give this Mishawaka team that many opportunities. Mishawaka's Chase Gooden with the one-yard touchdown plunge. 15 zip cavemen as Mishawaka takes down Warsaw at George Fisher Field. 43-19 the final there. Last stop, we're talking TRC. Tippecanoe Valley leading the conference 5-0. The Vikings at Whitco. Start of the third quarter. The Valley up 46-0. But Whitco's Jack Hill trying to make something happen for Whitco. Nice defense there from Hill. Valley, though, goes to the ground, and they can ground and pound. This is Grady Moriarty, 5'11", 196-pound freshman, scooting to the outside, and he picks up a big chunk of yardage. Fast forward to the fourth quarter, the clock running. Moriarty, this is a 40-yard touchdown for the freshman. Tippecanoe Valley stays perfect, 60-6, your final.
stay tuned. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers, Gem of the Night, is coming up next. Per the Knights of East Noble, and you're watching the Highlight Zone, and we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Chargers. This is Neon Nation! Here comes the gym of the night on your number one sports station. Yeah! Yeah! Well, last Friday it was Lamarion Nelson doing some uh, Lamarion Nelson things. The Wayne Stud, 30 carries, 427 yards, and seven touchdowns. It's pretty good. Uh, a no doubter for the Highlight Zone's top honor in week five. But what about here in week six? Here is your latest Gem of the Night, brought to you as always by Peter Franklin Jewelers. Another SAC running back, another huge night, and it's John Tay Lambert. He goes full 360. When you see it in slow motion, it's even more impressive. 80-yard touchdown. He had 26 carries, 305 yards, and two TDs. Watch him here bounce all the way around, keep his balance, and then scoot all the way to the end zone to beat the defender as Northside Beats Homestead, I'm told this is Northside's first ever victory over the Homestead Spartans on the football field. And John Tay Lambert, a huge part of it. Congratulations. That is your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of oh, the night. Okay, next week's games. What does week seven look like? We got Carroll at Homestead because it is SAC rivalry week. We got Bishop Dwenger at Bishop Lures at the Battle of the Bishops. Columbia City is at East Noble. Central Noble at Busco McConaqua at Tippy Valley. All these and more next week on the Highlight Zone. For Josh, I'm Glenn, and that's going to do it here for week six. We'll see you next Friday night on the Highlight Zone.